Hi, I'm Alex Hughes, LaGrange, Georgia. The Marquis de Lafayette was tireless in his effort to get France to support America in its war for independence. Foreign Minister Virgin was, next to Benjamin Franklin, the diplomat of the age. Virgin said Lafayette would sell Versailles if it would help America. France's role in the American Revolution cannot be overstated, nor can Lafayette's influence on that account. When Thomas Jefferson was serving as America's minister to France, he once commented that where he, Jefferson, held the nail, it was Lafayette who hammered it home. Stanley Edzerta, a Lafayette scholar at Cornell University said, the Americans did not win their independence alone. It was won with the moral, financial, and military support of France. Keep in mind, it was Foreign Minister Virgin who coaxed Spain along. Early on, Spain followed France's lead in contributing funds, even if less enthusiastically. The Treaty of Alliance with France on February 6, 1778, was actually three treaties in one. Although the third one is not well known, it permitted Spain to join the alliance seamlessly when it got good and ready. Between 1776 and 1783, France provided the United States with more than 40 million liveries, about a quarter of it in outright gifts. Every year on the anniversary of the Battle of Yorktown, there is a commemoration at the French cemetery at Yorktown to remember French soldiers and sailors who died fighting for America's independence. The United States defaulted on both principal and interest of the loans in the first half dozen years after the Treaty of Paris, 1783. France did not press for payment. Its own treasury was in such meager health that France was forced to stop payment on its own bills even while it lived up to its commitment to paying the last installment on its loan to the United States of six million liveries. That wasn't just pocketbook philanthropy, nor was it pitching chess pieces on the board. France was involved with outcomes. The Battle of Yorktown, October 19, 1781, could not have been won without France. Washington sent Lafayette and 1,200 Continentals to Virginia. His assignment was to keep Lord Cornwallis occupied and agitate him when opportunity permitted. As it happened, Lafayette backed Cornwallis up against the York River and surrounded him. Cornwallis counted on the British Navy to sail into the Chesapeake Bay and up the York River for his escape. He believed Lafayette had more men than he did because Lafayette's spy, James Armistead, was feeding Cornwallis inflated numbers and other false information. Lafayette could not survive a frontal assault had Cornwallis attempted a breakout. Lafayette and Washington needed two things, reinforcements on the ground and a navy to blockade the entrance to Chesapeake Bay. America, you recall, had no navy. Rochambeau and 8,000 Frenchmen began their celebrated march to Yorktown. 680 miles from their camp at Newport, Rhode Island. He joined Washington's forces at White Plains. They had a combined force of 20,000. On September 28th, Lafayette found himself reinforced. Cornwallis surrendered on October 19th, 1781. Claiming illness, Cornwallis would not attend the ceremony but sent Brigadier General Charles O'Hare to stand in for him. But when O'Hare attempted to surrender the sword to Rochambeau, the French general refused it and nodded to Washington. It was a magnanimous gesture. Although Rochambeau was senior in age and experience, he deferred to Washington as commander-in-chief. In ancient Rome, Cicero said, Gratitude is the virtue from which all others flow. This 263rd birthday celebration for Lafayette is a good day to give our French friends a nod of thanks. Happy birthday, Marquis de Lafayette.